I think this is incredibly common, um, and, and you certainly alluded to it. I mean, uh, sepsis is the most common contributing factor up to about half of, uh, of AKI cases. Uh, and I think there's really two uh, sort of aspects to this that I think about when you think about how common it is with it. One is sort of the, the natural course of sepsis as a syndrome uh, and how your body responds to it, certainly as it's more severe with septic shock, um, especially, you know, the, the rates of acute kidney injury would go up from that. So I think it's the disease state, but it, with particularly with the care of sepsis patients, though, uh, there are a lot of opportunities for iatrogenic uh, uh, kidney harm as well, if you will whether that's from nephrotoxic medications, whether that's from giving too much fluid, uh, whether that's from giving a certain, amount of, a certain amount of fluid or a certain type of fluid, like normal saline as compared to balanced solutions. Uh, and so I think it's really uh, sort of a combination of both the, the syndrome that you're dealing with, but also the opportunities for uh, iatrogenic injury as well. Yeah, I think we were we, we were certainly not the first uh, to, to use this term necessarily. So I think another group had used the term sepsis associated AKD as well uh, and found that 25% of patients with septic shock actually developed acute, uh, acute kidney disease. And AKD is really the way that I think about it as sort of a non-resolving AKI that lasts at least seven days, uh, but, but less than 90 days. And I think this is really an area of, of sort of kidney health, if you will, particularly with inpatients that is very really poorly documented. You know, we know that AKI is poorly documented. Uh, I think certainly persistent AKI, what would be this classification of AKD uh, is also poorly documented. And I think in a lot of cases, the, the lack of the kidney function returning to baseline, it not only is present in the intensive care unit, but it continues with that patient throughout hospitalization. So I think our, our hope with sort of tagging this is, you know, really twofold is that Sepsis is an incredibly common contribution, not only to AKI, but as well as AKD, um, but also that based on the long-term outcomes that we found in our study, uh, that it's an important area to follow up as well in terms of long-term kidney health. I think especially with, with sepsis, I think that the AKI sort of ident identifying trajectories and different phenotypes is certainly still in its infancy. Uh, there's been a, a little bit of research about uh, sort of different clusters of acute kidney injury and sepsis, including those that rapidly resolve, uh, including those that go on to develop, you know, end-stage kidney disease like we saw in our study as well. Um, and, you know, there's there's been a few studies as well looking at biomarkers and if biomarkers can recognize some of the organ injury that essentially sepsis represents. Um, to, to sort of determine the, the presence of sepsis essentially sooner. Um, so I think we're still very much in its infancy in terms of the management of, of stratification tools acutely. Uh, and then our, our study was really interested in those patients um, that were discharged and, and essentially followed. So we followed them for a median of 14 months um, and basically were successfully able to risk stratify their long-term kidney outcomes um, based on the AKD staging criteria that we borrowed from the ADQI. Yeah, I think uh, really what we observed in, in our work was that at, at discharge, the stage of AKD uh, could essentially risk stratify among important long-term kidney outcomes, whether that was mortality, dialysis, or incident or progressive CKD. And so I think the two take-home messages for me from that is that uh, a patient's kidney function at discharge is sort of a, a unique opportunity to reassess some things. And one is from a clinical and a research perspective, um, it, it's a way to, to really risk stratify the, the trajectory of kidney health uh, over the next year or two, essentially. So that includes follow-up and the research that includes what kind of treatments patients may be eligible for in trials and role for post-AKI care. But I think it's also sort of a, a window into the fact that from the time a patient presents with sepsis to the time when they get discharged, that's an important window where we have more access to tests and really medical care and monitoring of kidney health than we do in a lot of other settings. And so. Uh, I think the sooner that we can detect sepsis and the sooner that we can get a handle on the kidney injury and mitigate the kidney injury, including any iatrogenic insults, uh, again, we have that limited window of time before a patient might be eligible for discharge, um, but that essentially their kidney function at that discharge point, though, uh, does go on to predict their long-term kidney outcomes after sepsis.
Yeah, I think uh, the the challenging part about sepsis and acute kidney injury, especially in, in the critically ill patient population, is typically, you know, what one problem needs in terms of treatment uh, might be bad for another problem, or might be bad for another problem. Uh, and so it's always a balance of, of not shooting yourself in the foot uh, with any particular organ system. And so I think um, in, in terms of this relationship and, and risks of progression, I think, um, you know, again, especially thinking about whether to initiate antibiotics and particularly which antibiotics and nephrotoxins, given a patient's risk of acute kidney injury, um, I think can really go a long way in terms of personalization of care, uh, both now and in, and in the future. And I think, again, uh, chronically, I think our, our study was really focused on, on the acute kidney disease um, that, that was attributable to sepsis. And so I think this really sets us up, hopefully, uh, able to understand a better long-term trajectory of these patients. Um, and, and sort of how we can follow them more closely and potentially target better treatments in the future to improve their outcomes.